All right, we will go ahead and get started now. Again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior engineer with Inflow Communications. I'll be taking you through our webinar today, which will be focused on Genesis Cloud and how to configure some basic call flows, including some settings that we do commonly see missed um, when we go through and um, help with configuration and troubleshooting um, when new queues do get set up. So we're gonna go through those processes, how to set up flows, and also how to make sure that you have a number assigned to your flow so that you can have people calling in. Um, a little bit about Inflow Communications before we get started here today. Inflow Communications does have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. Voice is what we do. We don't branch into networking equipment or other things of that nature. And what that means is when you give us a call for your voice solution, you're gonna get in touch with somebody who's gonna be well-fasted, well-versed in what you use, and will be able to help you with anything you need. We are a Mitel Platinum partner, as well as partnered with RingCentral and Genesis Cloud. We have offices and employees across the United States, and we currently support over 200,000 endpoints and over 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. And we're maniacal about the customer experience. We wanna make sure that we get you all the information that you need and then some to make sure that your voice applications are gonna do exactly what you need for your business. A Couple quick upcoming webinars that we have um, in the near future for you that you may be interested in. Um, in two days on the 18th, we are running a Genesis Cloud 101 user training. This is going to let your users get acquainted with how to use the application um, in the browser or in the desktop app, um, understand how to make and receive calls and the difference between calls and interactions. So we will be talking about that on Thursday. On the 23rd, we will have a webinar on expanding your customer engagement strategy. And on the 25th, we will have a webinar on specifically how to leverage SIP trunks to your best advantage in a MyTel or Shortel environment. So what to look for, how to get it set up, what to expect, um, hardware that may be required, um, that will all be covered in that webinar as well. Here's a quick snippet of some of the customers that we do support. And as always, there is a question box in GoToWebinar. If you have any questions as I go through this webinar, you can type those in there and I will get to them at the end. If there's anything that I can't answer directly, I will get your email address and make sure that we get you an answer as well. And with that, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and jump over to the admin page for Genesis Cloud here. Um, if you're familiar with the term Pure Cloud, they have recently rebranded Gen Genesis Cloud as just a new name for Pure Cloud. Um, so it is the it is actually the same application. And what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about some basic concepts for setting up, for setting up flows. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at queues, ACD skills, and how they apply. Some advanced routing and then how to tie it all together. Um, so we'll build a very basic flow specifically for that queue and then make sure there's a number assigned so that we have um, the ability to actually make calls into that queue. Um, we will have some follow-ups on this as well. We'll probably have a um, Genesis Cloud call flow um, series of webinars. And this would be the one that will start off kind of how the, these things work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and start configuring a queue. Um, a queue is going to be how you actually handle calls in Pure Cloud from a contact center environment side of things. So this is going to be where you would actually set up your users so that they can actually take those ACD calls. You can use wrap up codes to see what kind of calls these are. Um, give them time so that they can work after the call. And also just make sure that the routing is the way that you want it to be. So the right agents are getting the right calls at the right time. And so what I'm gonna do is under the contact center spot here, you'll notice that there is a link that says queues. The other way you can just find it is if you just type queues into the search bar, we'll bring it up very easily for you. I'm gonna go ahead and click into here. If you already have queues built in your system, you may see several in here. Um, it'll show you the name, it'll show you the division, which is just a way of segmenting out your cloud system so that some people can see certain things and others can't. So if you need anything like that, that would be covered in a separate webinar. Um, and also the number of members, and you can also edit and delete them from, from the uh, bar on the right. What we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna use for a test, we're gonna use my inflow training queue here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click into this and this will open this page here. And you will see there are a number of different tabs at the top. We have settings, members, wrap up codes, and then a few for the different interaction types that can be handled in a queue. Um, the nice thing about the way that Genesis Cloud handles these queues is you can actually set up one queue and use that for um, voice calls. You can set up chat um, through your website for it for the same queue. 
and use that same that same queue setup rather than having to build separate ones out. So it does make it nice and easy. And there's a few different things that you can do from the queue standpoint that will make your life a lot easier, as well as certain things that you need to make sure are set up correctly in order to um, make sure that the calls actually route appropriately. So we're gonna go through each one of these things here and what they mean. So on the settings page, this is gonna be where you're gonna do the bulk of what you're going to need to do on the queue side. Um, you have your name and division, um, and then down below is kind of how the um, routing of the call as well as how your agents handle the calls um, can be set up. So I'm gonna go through the different options for after call work here, as well as the evaluation method and the routing methods. Um, starting with the after call work, just working our, our way down, there are four different options that you will have here. Um, after call work, it can be set to optional, which means your agents can decide whether or not they want after call work. There is no actual timer for it. So they would set whether or not they need after call work. They would get whatever they need to get done done. So taking in notes, um, setting up a support ticket in your ticketing system, things of that nature. And then they would let themselves out whenever they are ready. Um, so this is one way to do it. You also have three different mandatory options. So the mandatory discretionary is going to force your um, agent into wrap up after the call. This is going to let them, again, just like optional, get out of wrap up or after call work as soon as they are ready. So there's no timer. In fact, you'll see when I try to hover over the timer that we have a little do not enter sign because there's no reason to enter anything here. So if they, um, as soon as they're out of the call, they get after call work for as long as they need until they are able, until they're able to get everything finished and they're ready to take the next call. The more common options are going to be mandatory time boxed and mandatory time boxed no early exit. And the difference between these two is with the mandatory time box, you'll see that the after call work timeout is now um, going to allow me to enter a um, number here. So I'll just put 30 seconds as an example. Um, this is going to force your user to take 30 seconds of wrap up. They can't take any more. They can't, they can't take any, any less. They get that 30 seconds to finish up whatever they're doing, um, enter any wrap up codes on the call. After that 30 seconds, they are placed back into the queue and they are able to take, take more calls. The difference is, and I'm sorry, I misspoke. With mandatory time box, they can leave after call work early. So if you finish in 10 seconds and you're ready to go, you can get yourself right back in the queue. Mandatory time box, no early exit will do um, exactly the same thing, except they cannot leave after call work. Um, if they're done in 10 seconds, they do have to wait that full time before they can take another call. So those are the four different ways that you can set up after call work. This is just gonna depend on what you need for your business, what works best for you. If you have a queue that has wildly different functions and some things that need to be wrapped up after a call may take longer than others, then the discretionary may be a good setting for you. Um, for a lot of customers, they do use the time box or the time box no early exit. Then you have your evaluation method and your routing method. And this is going to be how calls are actually going to be um, distributed to your agents. So there's a few different things that can be done here. And um, these tie in with skills. The skills are actually applied at the flow level, which is done in architect. So we will be talking about that after this as well. Um, but to talk about the evaluation methods here, um, for the um, three options you have, it will default to disregard skills next agent. This means that there, the system doesn't care if there's any skills assigned to the call from architect. Um, it does not care if your agents have the appropriate skill for the call. Um, as long as you have agents set up, the next available agent um, will, will get the call in that particular case. Then you also have all skills matching and best available skills. Um, skills can be assigned to your users um, with, a, with a priority based on a five, store, five star format. Um, with your all skills matching, as long as your agents have the skill in question, so if the, in this particular case, if we had this set up for a support skill, um, and we had three three members in it and they all had the support skill, they would be able to get the call if it was set to all skills matching. If one of those users did not have the support skill and a call flag for support comes in, they cannot be presented the call. So this is a way to actually set up queues that ha might serve several different purposes. So maybe you have one queue with all your users, but you have um, three different ways to enter that queue and each, each uh, call is flagged for a different skill. You could set it up that way if you so chose. 
Um, the other option there is best available skills, and that's going to not only look and make sure that your users have the appropriate skill, but it's going to take a look at that skill priority, and it's going to prioritize somebody with a higher skill rating than somebody that is that has a lower skill rating for the call, assuming both are available. So you have both, you have all three of these options available to you. Um, in the majority of cases, I typically do see either um, all skills matching or disregard, disregard skills next agent with cues. That's typically how this will be done um, because there's, un, there's another couple of ways to set up the um, call routing to your, to your users um, as well, which is going to be handled under the routing method. Uh, the routing method, to pop this up so you can see these options here, there's a few different ways you can do this as well. Um, and this is going to handle just who gets prioritized first. And you can use this for tiers of agents as well, which is a common usage for it. So the standard routing is going to look for the, the uh, agent that's been idle the longest, and it's going to just send them the call. Um, so it's as simple as that. You have an agent that's been waiting for five minutes and one that's been waiting for three minutes. The one that's been waiting for five minutes, assuming that the evaluation method can pick that person, will get the call next. Um, the advanced routing will let you do a little bit extra though. So let's talk a little bit about preferred agent routing first. Um, you'll see here, if you can read this and I'll highlight it to make it a little bit easier. Um, it, you can actually choose a pool of preferred agents in architect um, that will allow you to um, set um, so that if the, you may have like two or three people that you would like to take the majority of the calls for a specific queue, maybe they're the most well-versed, they've been there for a long time, they know what they're doing. Um, you can set it up so that the system will prioritize them first every time if you want. And then after a few rings, you can add um, different points where more people get added um, in it, into this. There's also, with a very similar setup, bullseye routing, which is what we see more commonly here at Inflow. Bullseye routing lets you tag different members in the queue um, for a different bullseye point. And um, you can add rings and even strip skills at this point. So what you can use this for is you can actually set this up so that you have your initial tier one agents as the first ring. Um, then after a certain amount of time, you may want to add more people into the queue. So maybe you have your tier two or your advanced support techs um, added after about 30 seconds so that they are able to take the calls as well. That way that you keep your tier twos free so that they can assist with anything that comes up for your tier one agents, but they can also assist with overflow if there's an issue with calls. So to show you how this one works here, I'm gonna add a couple of bullseye routing points. And you'll see here on the first one, um, it'll, it'll tell me that I can route to available agents for whatever number of seconds I wanna specify here. And then on the ring exit, because after 30 seconds, this this uh, first bullseye point would stop. I could remove skills if there's any skills on the call. So what this will do is maybe we have a few people in with the correct skill. We have an overflow group that's used for triage, but they're not skilled for, say, support. Um, we could use this remove skills to, re to strip that skill. And then once that 30 seconds has elapsed, that skill no longer applies. So if we're set to, for example, best available skills, once this gets stripped, it no longer matters if a user doesn't have the skill because they'll still be able to pick up the call. And you can do you can do this um, several several times if you want. And then you'll notice at the end, it'll say route to all agents in queue based on selected evaluation method. Um, so the way bullseye routing works is if you're in tier two, um, for example, which I'll show you here on the members tab, um, the second tier, once it gets past bullseye ring two, they get added to the call. So they aren't the only ones that are being rang at that point. Everybody that was previously getting ring back for this um, or would be selected for these calls are still in the pool. This is just adding more people to the pool. And so for example here, I'm going to go ahead and save that. So that piece is here. I will have to go back into the inflow training box. That's another piece to keep in mind. And this is a Genesis Cloud thing in general. When you save changes, it's going to bounce you back to the to the initial page and you will have to go back to your queue or your user or whoever you're working with. So you can see here, we have the bullseye routing built in now. If I go to my members, you'll see that I've got a couple of users in here. Um, and if I set it up so that Tom user one was set to a bullseye ring number of two, um, what would essentially happen here is when calls first came in, it would only ring the first user, Thomas Lyons, um, for that 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, Tom user one would then get added to um, to the available pool of agents to select these calls. So this will allow you to set that up so that you can keep your your higher level um, 
people who should, shouldn't should be taking as many phone calls in the group so that they can help with overflow, but, you, uh, but they won't be inundated with calls on a regular basis. This is a good way to do that. Um, the other tabs are going to be mostly for um, your reporting as well as just a few things like wrap-up codes. Wrap-up codes are really, are really uh, straightforward. You actually build those in a separate tab here, which is right under queues um, that is labeled wrap-up codes. But if you have wrap-up codes built in your system, all you have to do is search for them in here. So if I was looking for the training support wrap-up code, for example, I could select that and hit this little plus button. That'll add that to the, the list of available wrap-up codes. And what this does is it just allows your agents at the end of their interaction to flag the call with a specific wrap-up code so that you can find them in reporting and very easily see what's going on in your system. So, um, for example, what we do at Inflow is we will do um, something like non-support request, um, support request, um, and or spam call, that kind of stuff. So we can see if we are getting spammed a lot, if we're getting a lot of non-support requests to our support line, and it helps us build our call flow out and make sure that our customers are aware of where to go um, if they do need to talk to us. So this is a nice, easy way to do that. And then finally, we are gonna focus on voice today. So to go through the voice tab um, and talk about what we have available here. Um, let's talk first about the service level and the service level target. Um, so there, these are two numbers. One's a percentage and one is going to be a time frame. The, the uh, default is going to be 80% um, percent in 20 seconds. And what that's telling you is the service level target for the queue is that you want 80% of your calls answered within 20 seconds of them entering the queue. So this is a way of um, understanding if your queue is handling the way that it should be, if you are able to actually answer those calls in the um, amount of time that you would like to, um, and gives you a good grasp when looking at reporting to say, oh, we may need to ma make some more agents available during certain times for this queue, or maybe you're, you're even a little overstaffed. This is something that you can look at. There's also a calling party name and a calling party number, um, which is something that if you are used to, say, the MITO environment, this may look a little bit different than what you're used to. Because Genesis Cloud can use queues for outbound calls, um, the calling party name and number are going to be um, something that you can set up so that it will actually outpulse that information when those calls go out on behalf of the queue. Um, and this is really, really helpful because you can actually use the calling party number of the queue itself so that they can call you back directly. So if we wanted to say, for example, inflow communications, and maybe we do 503-575-7540 here, that info would be passed out when we would make a call on behalf of this training support queue. And then under here is a little bit more information about um, how you how you can um, set up how your agents get calls. This this particular piece, your alerting timeout, is going to be how long an agent will will be able to pick up a call that is presented to them. It's going to default to 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, if an agent has been presented a call and they do not pick up the call, it will go to the next agent, and the agent that did not pick up the call will be placed in a state called not responding. If an agent is in not responding, they will not be able to take additional calls until they put themselves back into queue. Um, so this is something that you can see in reporting as well. If somebody's having an issue with, with picking up calls or is away from their desk, you will see this occur. And then you have a few, a few things for your NQ flow, um, which we'll be talking about here momentarily. The NQ flow is going to handle how, um, how calls that hit this queue are actually going to handle. This can also be altered in, in architect. So in a lot of cases, you might see default in queue handling. Oh, if I can type. Oh, is it not going to pop up for me? That's fun. That's OK. So we'll keep that as training. Um, but uh, you, can, you can actually type in the different names of the flows um, here. So if you know the name of a flow you want to use by default, you can. Um, more often than not, you will see that change in architect. And then if you're using any screen pop scripts um, for your for your users, for them to use for talking points, you can actually select your script here for the default script. And that will allow your agents, when they get the calls, to actually automatically get their script and their pop-ups and allow them to follow those. Then you have a couple things for Whisper Audio. This is mainly used for only if your agents are being configured to auto answer calls. Um, and this will just give your agents a little bit of a heads up that they have a call coming in rather than just a beep and they're on the line with the with the uh, person that's calling it. It's not often used, but you can set up whisper prompts of saying, you know, you have an incoming call on 
on the support queue and then you're on with the customer and you know what the queue what the call in the queue is for so that's going to be your base queue and we're going to use this kind of as a um as a base to set up a really quick in queue flow and call flow here so i'm going to go ahead and save that here that was the inflow training one queue so to keep that in mind the next piece that we're going to look at here is going to be actually architect so i'm going to go back to the admin page here and just like before, I can just go under architect. This one's easy to find because it's its own um, subtopic on the admin page. If you don't see it, you can easily type in architect and you can pop that up. I'm gonna go ahead and click into here. And there are a few different flows that you can look at in the Genesis Cloud system. Um, in particular, what we're gonna focus on today is the inbound call flow and the NQ call flow. Um, we're going to go over those fairly quickly. There will be some follow-up webinars talking about what we can do within those because these are very powerful tools. But um, as a general rule, um, the inbound call flow is going to going to handle how a call is actually brought into a queue or to a menu. And the in-queue call flow is going to handle what happens on the phone call while you are waiting um, for an agent to pick you up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a quick inbound call flow and we'll just call this training webinar. And go ahead and create the flow here. When I hit create flow, it's gonna bring me to a page that's gonna have a very basic menu already set up. Um, and you can do a few things with this. So we'll talk about this here real quick. Um, at the beginning of a, in or I'm sorry, an in inbound call flow, you have a starting menu. This is gonna be the base piece that you're gonna see whenever you set up a flow initially in an architect. This can be changed quite a bit, um, but a couple things to look at and also a couple things to be aware of. Um, so on the right side, we have the name of the menu. Make this very easy, so we'll just call this training webinar. If I can type. There we go. We also have an initial greeting and a menu prompt. And these are important to note to uh, note here because these are two different voice prompts that will play in the system when you create a flow. Um, the initial greeting is going to play before the menu prompt that gives you menu options. And by default, it has, hello, this is the initial greeting. And this will be played via text-to-speech, which is one of the ways that the system can handle prompting. Um, we highly recommend just getting rid of this. And you'll note that it turns yellow when I remove all of the text here. That's because Architect assumes that we wanna have some text in the initial greeting or some sort of prompt set up here. It will let you save. Um, a yellow error is just something that Architect thinks should be there. If you have any red errors, then Architect will not let you save. But in this case, this, this would just bypass the initial greeting. In, the, in here, um, for the menu prompt, this is going to be what people hear when they have options to actually use the menu. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say, press one for training. So here we would just hear press one for training when it came through. Now up on the left side here where it says starting menu, you'll notice it says training webinar. We have a disconnect, which is off of DTMF press nine, and we have nothing else here. The bulk of what you're going to do from a menu would be over on this side. And to show you kind of an idea of what you can do here, I'm gonna set up a transfer to ACD, which is gonna be what we would use for the specific queue here. And I'm just going to pull it up to the top. When I do that, you'll see that it pops in here. It has a little number assigned for the piece in the flow that it corresponds to. I've got a name here. So I might name this training, training webinar. Apparently my G key doesn't want to work. Um, and then I can also configure the DTMF button. So in this case, we want to use one because we're advertising press one for support. I can also configure DT, or I'm sorry, not DTMF, but speech recognition. So if I wanted to listen for the word training to be spoke on the phone, you have to hit enter there. Um, I can actually enter that in here. And if somebody speaks the word training while they're on the phone, um, in this menu, it will actually go to this button press. So you can do that here. Um, that it should be noted that the ability to use speech recognition, it can, it can cause some issues from time to time. Specifically, um, if somebody says something that doesn't quite sound right, it may not work. Other, or if you are um, 
looking for a few different terms, there is potential that somebody may accidentally go to the wrong menu. We've had it happen on a few occasions. Um, down below here, you do have to select a queue. Um, you'll notice this is highlighted in red. This would break the flow. So if I tried to actually publish this at this point in time, um, it would not allow me to. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna type in training and I'll do info training one here. And there's a little gray box that says override default in queue handling. So by default, it's going to actually handle um, using the queue handling that's set on the queue itself. If I clicked into this though, I can change the in queue call flow to whatever we would like to use. Um, so you can do that here. And I'll just, I'll use training one and we'll take a look at that here momentarily. You can also do some pre-transfer or field transfer audio. So you can say like, please wait while I transfer you, or if there's an issue with the transfer, sorry, we're experiencing technical difficulties, you can do that. The real big piece here though is the routing. The priority is going to um, allow you to select calls that are going to take um, a little bit of a higher priority for your agents than others. So maybe you have two queues that go to the same spot, but maybe you have one that you that you hand out to um, to high value customers or um, you have a specific line for like bigger accounts, something like that. You can set the priority higher, which will allow them to actually jump people in line when they jump in. Um, so this will allow them to get, get answered quicker. You can also set your preferred agents here. Um, so if I wanted to use that, um, I would just put in the agents in this box here and also the language skill. Um, typically this is always gonna be English spoken. Um, if you do have a queue that is, that is um, supposed to handle for another language such as Spanish, this is where you would add that. And those work very similar to skills. If an agent does not have that language ability on their user profile, they will not be able to pick up a call that's flagged Spanish, for example. And then you also add your ACD skills here. Um, for this flow, because we're running short on time, I'm not gonna add a skill, but this is where this skill would be applied. It will look against your users that are in the queues, and this will allow you to um, make sure that people only that only have the appropriate skill are able to answer those calls so you don't get somebody in sales answering a call for support, for example. So that's nice and easy. This is a way to present a menu. So if you wanted to do a main menu, you could set it up so that it's going it's going to provide options. But in this case, we only have one flow and adding a menu in front seems a little bit unnecessary. So this is where a task will come in. So if I click on task, and I pull a task down to reusable tasks here, I can create a quick flow for this. When I click on anywhere in this window where it says click to open, it'll pop open here. You'll notice I've got a start option and I've got a whole bunch of different options here. In this particular case, because we're just building a really basic flow, all I wanna do is transfer to our training support. So I'm gonna pull a transfer to ACD over here. And you'll notice I have all the same options that I did off the menu on this transfer to ACD. So if I just type in training again, and I do inflow training one, and just keep it that way, that's that's perfect. And then on the failure side, I do need to um, actually find a way to set up a finish to the call if for some reason this transfer doesn't work. You can get pretty fancy with this, like send it to voicemail, send it to another menu, do whatever you want in this particular particular case, I'll just use the disconnect piece on this side here, which will just provide the ability to finish the call. And I'm gonna go ahead and return to my overview now. And you'll see here that we have a new task here that just says new task one. There's a little button just below the name that says set this as the starting task. So if I click on this, you'll notice the starting task is now, um, is now this, this flow here that transfers directly into the training flow. And I can name it here, do whatever I want. The menu is still there. So if I ever need to pull back to it, so maybe I wanted to jump to this menu, for example, um, I could actually set up a jump to menu here down at the bottom. So if I go click to open it again, I can do a jump to menu instead of this. So let's get rid of this. Boop. Jump to menu. And I could set up the training webinar menu so that it would go, it would actually go to that menu if I so chose. Wouldn't make a lot of sense in this scenario, but it's something you can do. Let's see, and we are just about out of time, but I wanna show you guys the um, in queue flow as well, just so you can understand what, what we're looking at here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna publish it. I do see a red error, so let's see if I do come up with anything wrong. And what it is, 
what it is is my task doesn't have a terminating action because I got rid of the disconnect here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the disconnect and now it will let me publish this flow. Um, this is important because unless you are able to publish the flow, it will not become available to actually assign a number to it. And actually that's what we'll do to finish this up because we will be going more in depth on the flows in a um, future webinar here. I'm gonna wrap this up by assigning a number to what we just built. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the admin page here. I'm going to remove this piece. And where I'm gonna go is actually under routing for the last piece here. And it's gonna be specifically, it's gonna be call routing. And so when I click on call routing, this is going to bring me to actually where I can assign my DID numbers for specific queues. And you can see here, we actually have one set up for um, training one right here, which is going to be the, the uh, same queue flow that we just built. If I click into here, you'll notice that there are, there are um, routing protocols that we can put in place, regular routing. I can set up schedule-based routing. If I want to set up a schedule, this will be a future webinar as well, but you can set up an open and closed hours as well as a holiday schedule and even an emergency routing schedule. So if there's something going on in the office, you can set this up so that, um, so that you can send calls to a different spot altogether. In a lot of cases, this might be maybe an off system number, like a, another call center that you use for emergency purposes. And over on the right side, you're gonna notice a spot that says addresses, and it's gonna have a phone number here. If I click on this plus number, I can add another number to the system. If I start typing in a number, I can pick from available numbers in the pool and add that number to the flow to make that nice and easy. So now at this point, I have a published flow that goes to a queue that we have set up that has members. It's going to use a defaulting queue flow, which would essentially just be hold music until an agent picks up. And if I hit save here at this point, these numbers, if called, um, would then bring those calls directly to that, that queue because our flow is set up to go directly to it. Now in future webinars, we'll go over some more information about this, such as how to set up elaborate menus, do things like set up callbacks, um, and we will have some more advanced options there. But this is basics to look at for when you're setting up your agents and your users for keys. Um, at this point, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and throw those into the question box um, in your GoToWebinar, and I will take a look at that. I will give you guys just a couple minutes to see if anything pops up. All right, doesn't look like we're getting anything there. So let's talk a little bit real quick about how to contact Inflow if you have any questions about this or if you, or if you have any questions about your system in general. Um, for our current customer resources, um, if you have a non-urgent issue or just looking for some basic information, you can email us at support at inflowcommunications.com. These emails are answered in the order they are received. Um, you can also take a look at all of your open tickets with us in our support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com. This will allow you to take a look at all the tickets that you've created, or if you're the main contact for your system, all the tickets that your organization has created. You can see the status of those tickets, reply to them from, from the portal, um, pretty much anything you'll need to do with our tickets that you would work with Inflow. If you haven't used that before, you'll want to give us a call or send us an email because we do have to set up some stuff on our side in order for you to get access to that. And then finally, if you have an urgent issue or you just would rather speak to somebody on the phone, you can give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. Um, this is um, the best way to contact our support. We do have a three ring answer policy, so you won't be on the phone for 10 to 15 minutes waiting for an available agent. And anybody that you get once you do get through will be able to assist you because they will be well versed in your platform. If you're, if you're interested in any more information on our support packages that we offer, you can also send us an email at sales at inflowcommunications.com or call us on the phone at 844-446-3569. And again, on behalf of Inflow Communications, I'm Tom Lyons. Thank you very much for joining us for our webinar today. We do hope to see you in the future for more Genesis Cloud Concepts, and I hope you have a wonderful day.